personalities on this radio show are ready to rumble. Did I just say rumble? I meant crumble. They're ready to crumble. They've been all stressed out and geez. This radio show starts right now. Yeah, it starts right now, even though Hollywood originally put 8.15 and I had to change it to 8 a.m. I don't know why he put 8.15, because here I am. Sorry there was no show yesterday, but guess what? Mm, The incident occurred. My boss's mom passed away Saturday night. So, yeah, I had to cover for her yesterday morning. Uh, So, yeah, that's why there was no show. And, yeah, I had to cover for her this morning, too. And I was already at work from 4 a.m. until 7 a.m. And now I'm doing this. Then I have a doctor's appointment. Then I have to go back to close. So, yeah, that's my day. (laughs) Y'all want to be in my shoes? You want to be in my shoes? You can have them. But they're a little small. They're a little small. But that's okay. Y'all can have my shoes for real. For real. I could totally have my shoes. So good morning, everybody. Happy Taco Tuesday. Hope you all get to enjoy some tacos of whatever kind you may be liking. Chicken, beef, pink, you know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What do I got here today? Road Rage. Hope you're doing all right over there. Hope you're taking care of your own. Uh, I'm not going to announce anything unless you uh, say it yourself, but in my thoughts and prayers there, Road Rage, in my thoughts and prayers. What is so funny, Mike Ball? What? Because I said my shoes are small? Morning, Scuba Steve. You traitor. You hair hater. Whatever. I don't care. Do I I look great this morning? Yeah, I've been up since 3.15. Don't I look fabulous? My eye makeup's done. I am not wearing lipstick, and I don't care. I don't care. Oh, the taco comment. (laughs) What? Beef, chicken, maybe steak. I don't know. Pink. Whatever. Do your thing. I don't care. I don't care. I'll eat all the above but steak. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Morning thought. So let's see what we have in the news today. We've got idiots again because that's just how we roll. A uh, Bronx man had three million in cash and thirty pounds of cocaine stuffed in his furniture. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Investigators who went to the Norwood home of Juan Rondo, who was who is from the Dominican Republic, allegedly found twelve kilos of drug and what drugs? <laughs> drug. They put twelve kilos of drug. No, duh. Either put the drug. Or drugs. Stupid. God, I'm going to spell check your freaking post. I'm spell checking the news. So, yeah, he's from the Dominican Republic. And they also found wads of cash hidden in secret compartments throughout his apartment. Dude. Oh, wow. There are actually photos of his apartment (laughs) with hidden hidden compartments in all his furniture from his desk to his couch to you name it so a multi-million dollar drug den looked like an ordinary apartment until the agents and the investigators uncovered hidden compartments and various pieces of furniture filled with contraband rondon who is 60 was arrested 4 30 last wednesday after he was allegedly seen entering um and a location carrying a bag and then exiting with the same bag a short time later. He later then returned to the building empty-handed. When drug agents stop him, he allegedly possessed cocaine and the keys to an apartment. When they searched the apartment with help from the New York State Police canine unit, they discovered several pieces of furniture Outfitted with secret trap compartments. Man, I want some secret trap compartments in my furniture. That'd be cool. It's not like he cut the mattress open. He actually built secret compartments. From dressers to nightstands, a coffee table containing a hidden large compartment stuffed with bags of cash. Money was wrapped in bundles and labeled with dates spanning the past several years. 
They also found 10 luxury watches, makers of Rolex, 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 and Cartier. Cartier. What the hell? That's a dumb word. A hidden trap in his nightstand. Despite the large amounts of money, narcotics, and jewelry, the apartment appeared to lack security equipment. Why would you not have security with all that stuff in your place? Duh. Duh. My God, you idiot. Why? So right now he's being held without bail and <laughs> sent to Rikers Island. Have a nice time there, folks. He has prior drug arrests, according to the law enforcement. His court-appointed attorney didn't immediately answer a call seeking a comment. Oh, that's because those those pretenders are like they're very they're very busy. They're so very busy. Ah, uh, man. So good for the drug dog for finding all the hidden compartments. Yay, drug gods. Drug dogs are cool. They're cool. Just saying. They're totally cool. They they earn their keep them drug dogs for real i've met a few they're pretty cool just don't go near their car when they're in their car because they will bite your hand off what would you hide in my secret compartment a body <laughs> i <At> hollywood <laughs> i don't know i don't know i got diaries i do i still write in diaries i call them journals now because diary is too mm, no i have i have firearms <laughs> i got those everywhere in the house i don't need to hide those drug dogs are awesome when the airport loses my luggage these dogs find it for me in under five minutes i bet they do dude you got to put some hidden compartments in there <laughs> matthew meatballs how you doing this morning how you doing matthew <laughs> snitch dogs terrible terrible <laughs> the same thing that jimmy hoffa had in his glove box road maps oh lord road maps road maps to his to his hidden stuff okay now this one this one was this this one was sent to me by someone so we're gonna use it because i think it's hilarious okay okay a vietnamese man had a live eel surgically removed from his abdomen. The doctors believe it slid up his butthole. I don't know where you were that you had a live eel slide up your butthole, but that's just nasty. The stomach turning discovery was made when an unidentified man, 34, went to a medical center in wherever, Vietnam, and was in an in an in severe abdominal pain. Yeah, this was last Wednesday. Doctors believe that the sea creature entered the man's body through his butthole and slid through his colon. <laughs> you like how I say butthole? Butthole. Butthole. The eel was found after doctors performed an ultrasound and an x-ray, which showed a foreign object was inside the man's digestive tract. This is an extremely rare case, the head of surgeries told the local outlet. The rectal area has a lot of fecal fluid and an, is an easy, easy, uh, got that, is easily infected with bacteria, but it was performed safely, so the surgery did not have any problems. The eel caused intestinal perforation and peritonitis a condition that causes inflammation in the stomach or abdomen. The man was kept in the hospital after surgery and reported having mild abdominal pain after waking up. Dude, they literally show a clip of this thing being surgically removed and it's still moving. It was alive. And according to the measurements, it was... It was about a foot in length, and that slid up his butthole. How do you not know something sliding up your butthole? Dude, we sit there, ooh, wrong hole. What the hell? How did you not know? I don't know. You just dumb, man. Ha, mm, mm -mm. 12 inch long. 
12 inch long, a foot, literally a foot of a live eel swam up his baho. He was trying to smuggle the eel in, in his prison wallet. <laughs> no, it wasn't an electric eel. I would, <laughs> I would have so, baho. That's right. That's how it says, Matthew, baho. But I, I don't know. I just, it's just, how do you not know? We're all, every woman I know, whoo, wrong hoe, wrong hoe, not the baho. But let me tell you, it was in his baho and went, yeah, uh, uh, dude, how'd you not feel that? I, I don't get it. And where were you that this actually got in your baho? Were you in the water? And you had to have been because that's like the only place where these things are is in the water. Were you in the water naked? You must have been. Because how else would it have done there? <laughs> At least yours wasn't. Your intestinal perforation wasn't due to any. I would hope not. Because if it was, I would really question you. I'm not even lying. That's just wrong. <laughs> yeah, it was like the size. Well, technically a Subway sandwich is like really only 11 inches it's not 12 if you measure it <laughs> just saying <laughs> he was probably under the sea i bet you something steve i did a survey of the ladies my old lady worked with and only one of them admitted to liking it up the corner <laughs> dude you do a survey at my work of all the women they are all gonna tell you no thank you uh-uh. No, thank you. No. No. Mm -mm. Gross. Uh, uh. No baho. Not for you. It's closed. More than just one type of music. World-class rock. It's like Captain Crunch, Honeycomb, and Raisin Bran. All in one bowl. Part of this nutritious breakfast. <laughs> You're listening to Motorcycle Madhouse Radio. WMMRDB Rockford. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you did. You nasty, you nasty. So today, I, I'm sure you saw that the total, the title was 90s flashback. Okay, so it is. This is what all people had in their possession. Maybe not all, but majority of people had this in their possession in the 90s. Okay, we did. We all did. We all had it. We all had this. We all had all of this. I'm telling you. All right. Who all remembers the cans of frozen juice concentrate in the freezer to make fresh juice mixed with water? Come on. Minute Maid, Tropicana. We all had it. I had it. Ours was pulp free. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because I don't like that pulp in the orange juice. It's so gross. Ugh. Ew. Hate it. Hate it. And if my mom got the stuff with the pulp, I used to put a strainer over my cup to strain the pulp out because I can't stand the pulp in orange juice. It's just nasty. I don't care who you are. But how many of you remember pulling those little containers that looked like Pillsbury dough muffins or whatever? You pull it out of your freezer and pour, pour this big old chunk of OJ in a container. And then you had to use the little container to fill cups of water to pour in there. And then you stir it and smashed all that frozen orange juice concentrate up. Come on. They still sell these. I'm so tempted to buy one. I really am. I'm not even kidding you. But we all we all did it. You remember that? We all did it. We all had it. We've all drank that stuff. Sometimes you don't even know that's what it is. But, you know, if it's in a pitcher, it, you know, or a container of some sort, you know, you know, a pitcher, it, it's it's not out of the container. It, it's it's frozen, frozen concentrate. Uh, how many of us remember as kids the orange and yellow Little Tykes picnic table, which was usually either covered with crayon marker scribbles or faded from the sun after being left in the backyard for like ever? I do. I had one. I did. And I 
Yeah, I'd make my dad when it was raining. I'd make him bring it in the house and put it in the basement because I didn't want my table to get wet. <laughs> it's in the backyard next to my sandbox. Not lying. I had a sandbox in my backyard. And we actually had a wood cover because it was made out of wood. Somebody made it. <laughs> and it was made out of wood. So we had a wood cover that went over the top of it so the cats wouldn't, neighborhood cats wouldn't poop in it. <laughs> I had a sandbox. What, you jealous? <laughs> Y'all jealous? I had a totally cool sand sandbox. It didn't even have wood wooden slots on it so you could sit on the corners. Yeah, I was cool like that. I was making sandcastles in my backyard. How about you? How about you? Did y'all make sand? Um, I had one. I'm sorry. And I had this table because the table was awesome. And then, of course, when my daughter was little, I had to get her a table. <laughs> but hers was pink and white. But, you know, she had one, too. And it was colored in crayons and markers and all that fun stuff. Okay. We all remember back in the day with the landline phones, right? What about the one that had the real squishy buttons and the light turned on as soon as you lifted the receiver? So it like it like lit up. Remember those? And it was like the, the buttons were here. They were little circle buttons. They were like in, in the receiver part. You remember those? Yeah. I knew something was wrong with the phone when it didn't light up because I used to just pick it up to watch it light up because it was so cool. It was like the typical kitchen phone hanging on the wall. It was, for real. I love that thing. China in the 90s, orange juice, me in the 90s, Mac 10s, and Uzi so cheap. I bought. Well, I mean, you got to buy what you got to buy, Road Rage, for real. <laughs> the 90s make me think of pagers, neighborhood sluts, and good booger sugar. I had a pager. Shut up. We used to type in codes in pagers just so you can go to a payphone because those existed back then to figure out what the person's telling you, where they're telling you to meet them. Okay, how about answering machines? Did you guys have answering machines? We did. Okay, and how many in the junk drawer? How many extra backup mini tapes for the answering machine did you have in your junk drawer? We used to, because they used to come in a pack of three. We used to have at least two of those. <laughs> We did. We had backups. I wonder what happened to all those tapes <laughs> and all the messages that were left. Of course, after time, they made it where you can actually just like rewind it and erase it and like tape over it and whatever. But no, we had we always had six backup cassette tapes for the answering machine because it was cool. See, you remember all this stuff, right? <laughs> this stuff was cool. You know, whatever happened to all this stuff? <laughs> the spare batteries. Yes, you got to have the spare batteries in your junk drawer for the caller ID to work. Exactly. 100%. <laughs> you had to. You had to. Or whose mom? Okay, because my mom and all my aunts and my grandma had this crap. The homey food resin wall decor in your, like, kitchen. Like, yeah, like it would have, like, fruit <laughs> or, like, chickens or stuff. And like it would, like, literally just hang on the walls in your place. We all had it. We all had it. We all had it. Everybody had it. Yeah, my mother-in-law had that stuff hanging on her walls, for real. I think there's one in my kitchen. I don't know. I'd have to go check. <laughs> I think we still have one of those downstairs. I don't even know. Yeah, they had, yeah, yeah, the hard plastic. Or, like, we had the plastic fruit in a bowl on the dining room table as a centerpiece. And I, I, I remember telling you once before that I used to purposely piss my mom off and pluck the grapes off of it <laughs> I would pluck the grapes off of them and she'd find them all over the house because they were purple they were all over the house because I didn't care because I just thought it was funny 
And don't forget, if you have all this crap on your wall, you also had the matching country canisters to re, you know, to reinforce the theme. So if you had apples on your wall, you had the canisters for like your sugar and stuff with the lids and it was filled with sugar. Yeah, you guys remember. Come on. Y'all need to go to your ma's house and check it out or your your aunts or your grandma's or something. Yeah, and check it out. Because they all still probably have it. I don't even care. One of my all-time favorite things when I was growing up was eating corn on the cob. With, like soaked in butter, okay? Soaked. Like I would like melt butter and pour it all over my corn. I don't even care. It was good. But remember the corn holders that looked like corn on the cob? And you would shove them things in the ends of your corn on the cob? Yeah, they looked like little corn. Yeah, those were fun, weren't they? Those were fun. I used to stab my brothers with those or try to anyways. I didn't know you weren't supposed to. <laughs> we were so poor we tried to eat our fake fruit what they had fake bananas and and yeah they had like all of it it was great you still have some of those steve <laughs> those are awesome i actually seen them being sold at walmart the other day i was so tempted to buy them but we like never make corn on the cob <laughs> we don't and it's like, if I do, I got to like scrape the corn off of it because I can't bite into it anymore. So that kind of defeats the purpose of having corn on the cob. So I just buy corn in a can. Uh, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I'm the only one that really likes eating corn in the house. So I get those little tiny cans <laughs> of corn just so I can have some. But we all remember those stabbing them things in the corn on the cob. We do. Let's see what else. <clears throat> the Rubbermaid plastic laundry hampers with the ventilation holes that were pretty much indestructible because I used to shove my brother in one. <laughs> and the funny thing is they still sell these. They do. Because I had one a couple years ago and they are no longer indestructible. Yeah, because my handles broke off mine. You know, and it had that cute little lid that you put on it. Yeah. Like, it almost resembled like you were throwing stuff in a garbage can because the lid would go. Yeah. See, we all remember this. This was fun stuff growing up. Let's see. <laughs> How about those parents that used to have decorations in the bathrooms? Like the bath oil beads in the bathrooms that were purely decorative and nobody ever used. They just sat in a bowl in the bathroom. Or like my mom, every holiday when we were having, like everything when we had gather family gatherings, she would bring out the decorative soaps. Yeah, like Christmas, there would be soaps shaped like Santa Claus's head and like snowman. And they would only <laughs> be put out during those times the decorative soaps and the funny thing is nobody would use the decorative soaps that's why they lasted throughout the years because they would just like sit in the soap dish because this was before you know the pump soap was a big deal we always had soap in a soap dish did you guys have soap in a soap dish <laughs> I'm telling you, it's beach day over here. Really? You got beach day? What's beach day? I want to have beach day. I mean, come on. This is some good stuff. This is some good stuff. Um, How about this? I We had one of these, and it was on the table in the, in the hall, front hallway. We had this. It was like a table where my mom kept like all our phone books. Because remember phone books? Because that's how we used to have to look up phone numbers. Couldn't Google them. They were in phone books. So this cabinet was filled with phone books, atlases, maps, you know, all that kind of stuff in the front hallway. And then right above it was a mirror so you could see how goofy it looked when you put on your winter hat. And on top of that table was a wicker mail basket. 
Mm -hmm. So when you bring your mail in, you could just throw it in that basket. Yeah. We had one in the kitchen and we had one by the front door. Yeah. And then, you know, like my, like if us kids brought it in, we were told to put it in the basket and then they would, my mom would take the mail and get it. Yeah. And then, of course, I was nosy. I always had to look through the mail, even though nothing was ever for me. <laughs> I'd look through it. Ooh, what is this? What is this? And then the catalogs, I would always get them. Yeah, that was the other thing that was in that cabinet next to the phone books was all like the J.C. Pennies and Sears catalogs because those were cool. Yeah. How about dial-up internet and AOL with the <laughs> annoying modem noise trying to get online? Yeah. And how about, you got mail. You got mail. I didn't care. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. Yeah, we could afford winter hats and mirrors. Shut up. There was a mirror in like every room of the house. It was kind of no annoying. Or how about where the bottom half of your wall was wood paneling and the top half, yeah, was dining room exactly road rage we had that in the dining room the bottom was like white paneling and then the top not just wallpaper it was wallpaper but it was wallpaper that made one big picture it was like the ugliest thing in the world and my family room the the front room area was orange and brown we had orange curtains yeah orange yeah and the dining room, the carpet was gold. And we had green curtains. I don't know what the hell was that shit. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. That was crazy. Or how about, how about the Campbell's Kids soup mug that were perfect, not just for soup, but also for hot cocoa with mar marshmallows. Do you guys remember those? I actually saw one of those Sunday when my son and I went to Goodwill. I saw one of those and I was very tempted to buy it. <laughs> it was the little Campbell suit mug. I mean, it was like, it would fit like, yeah, like a, almost a whole can of soup with just a little bit of water. <laughs> just enough. Yeah. Do you remember those? Does anybody ever have those Campbell soup kids cups? You had that, right? Yeah, see? <laughs> Hello, Dirty Knobs. How are ye? Let's see what we have. Time to get out of bed. Time to put on the radio. Oh, you've already put it on. <laughs> You're listening to Motorcycle Madhouse Radio, WMMRDB Rockford. So we all had this stuff so far. A lot of people are remembering these things and then it's making you remember other stuff, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes, it is. Because, you know, this is just how I roll. I seen these items. The minute I open this one and seen the frozen orange juice, I'm like, nah, I got to bring back this stuff. We got to bring back the memory of these things. It's a good thing to talk about. Okay. I actually still have one of these in my house. It doesn't work, but I still have one of these. The fancy glass domed clock that you were always tempted to take the dome dome off of it just to play with the insides. How many people had one of these? <laughs> I literally have one in the next room. I do. It's funny. And we actually had two, but the grandkids broke one. They knocked it over. Yeah, we have one of these. It's in my daughter's room. It doesn't work, but it's there. She actually got it from uh, Hollywood's grandma. And I think that's why she still has it. It was to she she gave it to her. Yeah. Mm hmm. It was great. They were great. Or, oh, my goodness, I remember this. I actually seen one of these that, and I wanted to get one again just for fun. Do you remember those ginormous photo frames that were like collages and they had like the squares and the circles and the triangles and like all these weird things and you got to put pictures behind it. Yeah. 
I've seen one of those at Wally World. I was so tempted to get it, but I didn't because it's like not even cheap. I'm like, really? These were like five bucks back in the day. They ain't no more. They're like 15, $20. No thanks. But I remember having some of these. We had two of these and they were in the stairwell going upstairs to the top floor. And it would be like all our old school pic, like school pictures. Yeah, we had three. So one for each kid. And they were hanging up on the stair. They were so pathetic. It's like, oh, look, there's my first grade picture. I'm such a dork with the bowl haircut. Yeah, I was the dork. I don't care. We had them. <coughs> oh, God forbid we forget. <laughs> the dried flower swags that hung over <laughs> doorways or hang over the framed wall art. Did your parents have did you did your parents have those dried flower things hung up in the house? Or like bouquets of like dried flowers? Yeah, I used to break those. In like fake vases. Yeah. Uh-huh. I used to break those. My sister in law was really good at having these dried flowers. She literally would have them over just about every doorway in the house. I don't know. Was it an Italian thing? I don't know. Cause she was like way Italian. But it's who does this? We all, all our parents did. Let's not bring this, some of this stuff back. Okay. We just, no, we don't need it. We don't need all this stuff back. Just no, we don't at all. We don't need these. Oh, my favorite. Um, not going to lie. I have some of these. I gave them to my daughter cause she wanted them. The Disney collector cups that were sold at Burger King. Do you guys remember those? Or like the Ronald McDonald cups? Or like, uh, what was it? I think they had uh, jelly at the grocery store that was in like Mickey Mouse containers and stuff. Like glass jars. Do you guys remember any of those? We actually cleaned out the the, the jelly cups once the jelly jars were empty. We use them for orange juice <laughs> to drink orange juice. Those were our breakfast glasses. Yeah, shut up. I like Mickey Mouse. Can't help it. We also had Winnie the Pooh glasses. Yeah, all of them. I did. Uh huh. But do you guys remember getting these ones? And basically, the t the the thing was like the cover of their movie. Yeah, like Snow White, Dumbo, Peter Pan, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, we all. Mm hmm. We all had these. The green Christmas cups from Arby's became the fine china at our house. Really? <laughs> oh, my geez. For real. You guys had this stuff. I know you did. How about everybody's kitchen table? We probably all still have this. The oak kitchen table that had the most uncomfortable matching chairs. Yeah, we have the oak, or, oak table downstairs, but we only have one chair. The rest of them broke. We got one chair left. One. Yeah, one. But we all had those. Mine always had... my, my Mine has a tablecloth on it downstairs. And I know every holiday when I was growing up, remember how you could like pull these tables apart and you could put extra leaves in them to make the tables bigger when you have company over? Yeah, we did that, and then my mom would put the ugliest tablecloth in the world over it. And what I didn't get was she always used cloth tablecloths, so she had to wash them. Why not use the plastic ones where you could just wipe it off and it's done? No, she used the cloth tablecloths, and for some reason, the tablecloth always had to match the curtains in the dining room, which were freaking green. So every time we used the table in the dining room, when we had family come over for parties and whatnot... Is a green tablecloth, and it was like the ugliest green. There's like not even really a color, a green that I can state that it was. It was ugly. So all you can remember from the '90s, Steve, was your drugs. Was the drugs? 
Oh, they had plenty of that, too. They had plenty of it. All right. The stereo with the three-disc CD player and remote control that felt like it was the height of technology. And it, like, had the speakers that had the wires attached, and you could, like, move them a little bit because the wires weren't really that long. You know what's funny is we have one of these in our garage. <laughs> I'm not lying. <laughs> we have one of these in our garage. Uh, and, and it works. Yeah, we have one. It's kind of cool. I don't care who you are. It's cool. We have one. I'm not even lying. There is one. Mm-hmm. We do. Because that's how weird we are. We did. We had one. I liked it. It still works, so why not? Why not? Let's see. Uh, what else? You guys ever remember using a blender when you were growing up? Does anybody even use blenders anymore? I have one. We don't use it. It's just there. Okay. See if this sounds familiar. It's brown. It says GE Digital Clock Radio on it. Did you have one of those? With the AM, FM on the front. And then it had the sleep, wake, changing the hour and the minute. And a little black snooze bar. Do you guys remember those? Do you? I had one next to my bed. That was my alarm clock to get up for school. Other than my mom yelling up the stairs. You know, my mom used to yell up the stairs every morning for school. Because my younger brother and I were upstairs and my older brother was in the basement. Well, when he got older anyways. When he was younger, they shared a room. This is what I used to hear every morning. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. That is what I used to hear from the coming from the bottom of the stairs very loudly. Uh-huh. Yeah, that that's how she woke us up every morning. So guess what? I I do it. To, I used to do it to my kids too. Things we do, things we do. You ever notice a lot of times there's a a lot of things that we did we do now that our parents did, or things that we say now that our parents said, and we're like, oh, we're never gonna say that. We're never gonna do that. You do it. You do some of the stuff. Come on. No, it's not still being used. <laughs> I don't even know what happened to that clock radio. Yeah, MTV when it was music. Yeah, and it, uh, yeah, it's like not anymore. It's just like not even a thing. But I wouldn't even know because I don't have cable. Because why? Because everybody has just like Hulu, Netflix, Prime. Everybody has that stuff now. Why? Why pay for cable? It's actually... I did the math and paying for the subscriptions to these things, you know, like the Hulu app and all that stuff. It actually comes out cheaper having these multiple apps than it does for me to have cable TV. Yeah. Me and my brother would wake each other up by pulling each other out of bed by our ankles. So it was smart to be the first one. Up. Well, yeah, I would hope, Steve, I, I, I'd want to be the first one up in that. We use a blender for making smoothies, have a food processor in the garage because J9 won't let me make my ghost pepper habanero Carolina Reaper salsa in the house. Why? Because it stanks? Because it's too strong of a smell? I bet you that's what it is. Or, okay, here's something that my, my, my mother still has, and it's in her apartment. The big brown looks like a desk, right? But you open the center compartment and it was a record player. Yeah. Do you guys remember those? Record players? Because they were cool. My mom still has the Chicago Bears uh, album. Mm -hmm. Singing, you know, we are the Bears shuffling crew. Shuffling on down, doing it for you. When they won the Super Bowl. The one and only time. Yeah. We all, we all know this song. We all know it. We all know it. You want to sing it? Nope, I don't either. I don't want to sing it either. Not singing it. Tempting, because I know the words, but no. You're 
Waking Up With Motorcycle Madhouse Radio, WMMRDB Rockford. I mean, who didn't have a record player? You know, I had one growing up because it was one of the things that I wanted for Christmas. And it was like the only thing I wanted for Christmas so I could play a little my little 45s, right? Remember the little 45s? And tell me if this rings a bell. It was a little tiny portable record player that you could plug in anywhere in the house. And it looked like a like blue jeans. Like the top looked like a blue jean pocket. And when you opened it, it was all white. <laughs> Come on, shut up. We all had one. I have a picture of that thing up in my attic. I do. I do. I'm telling you. Or how many people had that one relative or parent that did um, knitting? So everyone in the family had that same knitted blanket over the back of their chair or their couch. Did you guys have those, the knitted blankets? Ours was brown and orange to match the front room, and it was ugly, but it was always warm. You know, when they, like, crocheted those blankets or whatever? Y'all had one. Shut up. You know it. You did. Y'all had it. How about the notebook paper, like the, the spiral notebook that was next to the phone with everybody's home phone numbers listed in it, like their name and their phone numbers. And if you had their address, the address was written in it. My mom had a, what do you call it? It looked like an index card box, you know, the ones that they always made us bring to school, the index boxes with all the index cards. Well, my mom had one of those with the separators of the alphabet, and inside there, she would have everybody's name, address, and birth dates of all the family members. Yeah. Me, I used to always have it on a notepad next to my phone in my room. Mm-hmm. I did. We all did it. Now we don't write down phone numbers anymore, do we? It's like we give our phones to somebody. Here, just put your put your number in my phone. If I use it, I use it. If I don't, I don't. So see, I'm bringing up a lot of good things to remember, huh, Matthew? Pretty good, right? I'm telling you. We just wrote on the wall. Well, we did have, like, next to our phone, we had, like, that pad of paper that was, like, stuck to the wall. So we could write on there, too. Yeah, we did. Uh-huh. See? Memories. Memories. Okay. How about that popcorn popper that you plugged into the wall? Right? And it had, like, the clear, big, huge dome on it. And, you know, the popcorn was always pretty freaking dry. But we all popped popcorn in it. Or what was the other one that people used to use? That Jiffy Pop that you would do over a burner on a stove? I never tried that one, believe it or not. In my 50 years, I've never tried that one because we always had this dorky-looking, clear-covered popcorn maker. And then, of course, when we got our first microwave and microwave popcorn came out, that is the only way we made popcorn after that. And it's funny because I still make microwave popcorn. I do. I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie, but it's, I'm very picky on my microwave popcorn. It has to be like extreme extra, lots and lots of butter. And then I get this, I have this cheese shaker that's over by the microwave popcorn and I shake the cheese in it. It's so good. It's so good. I don't even care. I don't even care. I don't care. I don't care what y'all think. I liked it. It was amazing. It was good stuff. Hey, you know, it is what it is. I'm telling you, you got to do what you got to do. So I just figured I'd bring you guys all down memory lane, you know, because I can. And, you know, I just seen a picture of a sofa that reminded me of the sofa I had in the house growing up. Do you guys remember how stupid uh, the chairs were? 
you know, the outside chairs when we were growing up, the plastic ones where like, it would be like the lawn chair and you'd have to like click the top and click the bottom and then it's open so you can like lay down. <laughs> Do you remember those? Remember those? Did you guys have one? I had one. I thought they were great. Or, and not too far away from that would be like the 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 chairs that had like the cloth like weaved in or like the plastic cloth or whatever weaved into it. So like when you sit on it, you'd like hope somebody that sat on it wouldn't break through to you know the center of it. Am I ser I'm serious. Do you guys remember these? But I, I like going down memory lane every once in a while because <clears throat> you don't like poo corn. I hope not. That's kind of gross. <laughs> but this, I mean, I just figured take us down memory lane because I'm sure you guys head over and you watch Mike Ball and BD and they do the biker news. And I don't do biker news because it's not my thing. Never has been. And Hollywood's been so extremely busy with work. But. I guess I'm going to be just as uh, busy as he is this week because I'm scheduled 55 hours. I got to open for like three hours and then go to my doctor's appointments and then go back for, <laughs> from 3.30 to 11 and then come home and get like two hours of sleep and go back to work. Yeah, that's my week. Mammary Lane. So I do have shows posted for the next two days uh, tomorrow. I don't have a title for it. I just have the date because tomorrow is actually my daughter's 27th birthday on the 27th of March. It is her golden birthday tomorrow. Yep, she'll be 27 on the 27th. Um, the gold elephants and the plastic on the couch. Yes, DJ, I do remember the gold elephants. It's funny because my daughter found some at a a goodwill and she is addicted to elephants. So she actually has a set of gold elephants, but not plastic on the couch. I remember those plastic rollout things that you would walk across on the floor with the really pokey bottoms. Do you remember those? I do. I do. They were to my grandparents had them. Oh, you could say it tomorrow, Jason. Tomorrow's her birthday. Um, today is actually Hollywood's mom's birthday. Yeah, I don't know. She's in her 70s. I don't know how old she is. I don't know. Yeah, today's actually Hollywood's mom's birthday. I actually wished her a happy birthday on uh, Facebook, you know, with the when the cute little picture. Really? You're talking about new shit on my show? Thanks, Mike, you dick. <laughs> Do that on your own time. God, you didn't see about that? God, Mike. I remember those discs with the brushes on. Yeah, those were annoying. But, I mean, okay, so I, I walked us down memory lane. So tomorrow, it's uh, I, I'll, I'll figure out something. I don't know if Hollywood's going to be on the show or not. And if he's not, then I'm probably going to talk about something, you know, cool. And then Thursday, we're actually going to talk about men's mental health. Why? Because... Nobody does. Everybody thinks mental health issues are only with women, and they're not. It's men as well. So we're going to talk a little bit on uh, men's mental health on Thursday. Friday, unfortunately, you won't see me because I have to do 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. on Friday, covering for my boss. So we got two more days, and then next week we'll be back to normal. So until then... Enjoy your Taco Tuesday, whether it's beef, chicken, steak, or pink. Let's have a show talking about strippers. We all love them. Well, you want to lead the show? <laughs> Entertain us, Pixie. Oh, unicorn Pixie. I actually have a stuffed unicorn on my bed right now. But, you know, I'll try to entertain. I will try to entertain. But until then, we will see you guys tomorrow where I'll be coming in the show half dead looking just like this because of working 4 a.m. to 7 a.m. So until then, enjoy your Taco Tuesday and whatever tacos you choose to eat today. And we will see you tomorrow. 
And that's it for a Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Don't forget to visit us on Spotify, Apple, iTunes, and all major podcast platforms for all the replays of Motorcycle Madhouse Show.